In this video, I'm going to teach you everything it takes to choose the right font for your Canva design. When it comes to creating designs, the most important thing you need to know is every design is created to convey a particular message to an audience. And choosing the right font plays a crucial role. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the step-by-step -step process I follow to choose any font at all for any design I'm making and some common mistakes you should avoid. Let's jump straight into it. So the first thing I need us to pay attention to is what is a typeface and what is a font. This is what you need to know. A typeface is a distinct group of characters with a particular style and a font is a variation within the typeface. So let's take a look at an example. If we have Poppins, okay? Poppins is the name of a typeface. But if we go and say Poppins Bold, that is the name of a font. So broadly speaking, the typeface is just the parent and the font is the child. And now that you understand this, let's take a look at some different type of fonts. So when it comes to choosing fonts for a design, there are so many types to consider. The first one is serif. To identify serif fonts, what you need to do is to pay attention to the decorative strokes at the end of every letter. These strokes are called serif and they give serif font a more traditional and elegant look. So here are some examples. We have the CMU serif, we have droid serif, inria serif, PT serif, DM serif display. And if you are on Canva, there are so many serif fonts you can choose from. Number two, we have sans serif, which derives its name from French. The sans means without, which so simply means without serif. These fonts are fonts without any decorative strokes at the end of each letter, which gives them a more modern and clean look. So an example would be Montserrat, which is every designer's favorite. We also have Poppins, we have Samsung Sans Booth, Canva Sans, Alibaba Sans, and so much more. Canva has a lot more to choose from. Now let's look at the third one, which is the script font. Good fonts usually mimic handwriting and are characterized by their fluid and cursive-like appearance, and they are often used for designs that require a more personal and elegant touch. So an example would be Sacramento, Dancing Script, and Great Vibes. Then we have the fourth type of font, which is the display font. So unlike the first three we've spoken about, display fonts are usually meant to catch the eye and make a statement. And I always describe them to be bold and heavy because they actually look bold and heavy. <laughs> so when it comes to display fonts, they are often used for headlines, titles, just so that they can stand out and grab attention. Some examples would be Anton, Champions Gothic and Lee Gothic. So now that we've cleared all the type of fonts, let's now look at what you need to consider when you are choosing fonts. I usually have four things I consider. The first one is the purpose of the design. So this is the first thing you'd always need to do make sure you are considering the purpose of the design or even the theme of the design and this should help you to choose any text that aligns with it the second thing to consider is the target audience when making a design you should know who is going to consume the design if your design is going to be consumed by people under the age of eight this should let you do the type of font you should use and if your design is also going to be consumed by corporate personnel this also will give you an idea of the type of font you should use for your design so that depending on the audience you are targeting they'll be more likely to respond positively to your design. Now, the third thing to consider is the mood. So what you need to ask yourself is what type of mood do you want to convey to whoever is going to consume your design and how do you want them to feel after they have seen your design? This alone should help you to choose the perfect font for your design. And the last but not the least, function and readability. So with this, what you need to do is to consider the intended use of the text. For example, if the text is going to be used as a title, this should give you an idea of the type of font you should even use. If it's going to be used as a body text, this also would help you to choose correctly because at the end of the day you'd also want to make sure that your text is legible and now before we head on to some of the tips you need to consider when pairing font i want to tell you about canva pro recently canva came up with some interesting updates which include some exclusive ones for canva pro users and i want you to be able to enjoy this so i have a link in the description box below that can help you use canva pro for free so check it out and start using canva pro for free today so with that out of the way let's now look at some tips to consider when you are pairing fonts when it comes to pairing fonts, one tip I always put into play is choosing fonts from the same typeface. So an example would be making my header Poppins bold and the body text would be Poppins regular or maybe Poppins thin. This always reduces the headache I have to go through when it comes to choosing fonts that would work well together and also makes font pairing easy. The second tip to consider is pairing serif and sans serif font. This gives a clear contrast between the font and can make the viewer easily identify what the title is and what the body text is. The third pro tip to consider is the size of the text you are using for your design. To explain this better, let's look at this example. Okay, we have the title, secondary title, and the body text. Now, what you need to consider is that the title text should be two times larger than the secondary text, and the secondary text should also be two times bigger than the body text. This makes it easy to control the eye of your viewer on your design. So now let's look at some mistakes to avoid when choosing fonts. The first thing is to avoid choosing too many fonts in your design. Number two, 
two is making sure your text is not too small because this would make it very difficult for anyone to read what you have on your design. And the third mistake to avoid is making sure that the space in between your text isn't too large or too small. If you avoid these three mistakes and consider everything we've spoken about in this design, you should be an expert when it comes to typography. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, the video on screen is the next video I want you to watch. As always, don't forget there's no limit to creativity and I should see you in my next video. Thank you